Hello, welcome to another video. We're going to take another limit as x goes to negative infinity, but this time um, it's a little tricky. There's a lot of tricky algebra involved in it when you take the derivative because we're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule here because it just doesn't work out. Okay. Now remember that the first thing you want to do when you have a limit problem is to just observe what happens. As x goes to negative infinity, this goes to negative infinity, but you're multiplying it by something. So what's going to happen here? You notice that this is going to go to 0, okay? 0 plus 1 is going to give you 1. The natural log of 1 is 0, so we're going to end up with infinity, negative infinity times 0. So this is the case of an indeterminate form, infinity times zero. So this is infinity times zero. We cannot have infinity times zero. It is indeterminate. Okay, if you watch my other videos that talk about the seven deadly sins in math, having infinity times zero is one of them. Just as you cannot have zero over zero or infinity divided by infinity. So, so that's what we're gonna, that's what's happening now if we just observe it. So what's the trick? What you want to do in order to effectively use infinity at any time, whether infinity or negative infinity, is to have fractions. So is there a way we can write this expression so that we have something over something? If you can think of it, you have it. But the easiest way is to see what, look at what is multiplying this function and bring it down and write it as a fraction. So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that this is equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity of, I'm going to write the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x squared. Then I'm going to divide it by 1 over x. This is exactly this. What I've just done is I have written x as 1 over x and pushed it down. And remember that this is the same thing as moving this up here. If you multiply the top and bottom by x, you're going to end up with x here and here, 1 here, and you're back to the original. So that's what I just did. And that's what you should always do if this is going to infinity and you have something like this. Okay, that's number one. So after you've rewritten it this way, you want to check what's going on again. Maybe you have an, you have an answer. So we're going to find look at what's going on as x goes to negative infinity. Now look. This is going to go to zero. So here we have a case of zero under. What do we have on top? If we do not have zero on top, if we have a finite number, we're good. Oh, it's the same thing we had before. It's still, this is going to go to zero. Zero plus one is going to give us one. Natural log of one is zero. So it's a case of zero over zero. Okay. We cannot have that indefinite form. So we cannot say, so we still say that this is in definite form and the form here is zero over zero we cannot have this ah but the good thing about the zero over zero indefinite form is you can now use L'Hopital's rule because this is the condition for L'Hopital's rule not the first condition okay now that we have this let's take the derivative of the top function and the derivative of the bottom function and whatever we get we clean up and try and see if we can take the limit we're going to say that by L'Hopital's rule, we're going to use the symbol h, okay? Most people just write h. By L'Hopital's rule, what we have is the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the derivative. It's going to be d dx of what we have here, which is the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x squared divided by the derivative of the bottom, d dx of 1 over x that's what L'Hopital's rule says. So now if we take the derivative of the top, what do we get? Remember when you take the derivative of a natural log function, it is usually the derivative of what's inside divided by what's inside. So this is going to be, let me write one more line here. This is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the derivative of what's inside, which is going to be 1 plus 1 over x squared prime divided by 1 plus 1 over x squared. That's 
we just differentiated this, all divided by the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 1 over x prime. Okay, let's go do the work on this side. So the limit as x goes to negative infinity of what we have here is going to be the derivative of this. So let's assume we want to take the derivative of this. What we have will be, let's write it out here. So let's say y equals 1 plus 1 over x squared. We're just taking the derivative of the top. And now we can rewrite this as 1 plus x to the negative 2. So what will y prime be? y prime would be the derivative of this, which is 0, and then this would be negative 2x to the negative 3, which we can rewrite as negative 2 times 1 over x cubed, okay, which is negative 2 over x cubed. We can leave it that way. So the derivative of the inside is um, negative 2 over x cubed divided by this. Now let's try to write this. Uh, together, because if we put this together, let's say we're not taking the derivative of this, so we're going to say it's 1 over x, well, sorry, 1, <laughs> 1 plus 1 over x squared. If we make this into a fraction, this is x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. So this is going to give us um, x squared plus 1 over x squared. So it's going to be x squared plus 1 over x squared. So we have just taken care of this top part. Everything divided by the derivative of the bottom. So everything divided by the derivative of the bottom. Now what's the derivative of the bottom part? So it's going to be y equals 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. So y prime is going to be negative 1, x to the negative 2, which is negative 1 over x squared. So that's what we get for the derivative of the bottom. Now, if you're a calculus student, you have to have this memorized, okay? You just know it, that the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared, because it's going to happen almost every time you, just, you take, you do calculus, integration or differentiation, that always happens. There's another one you need to remember, the derivative of the square root of x. You need to remember that. 1 over 2 root x is always your answer. So um, don't forget. So at this point, if you take the derivative of this, you're going to get negative 1 over x squared. You can see how scattered the whole thing is. That's the biggest part of this exercise. It's the algebra that's involved. So now, if you have a, a, another way of simplifying it, just go ahead. But I'm going to take care of this by myself. Now remember that whenever you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can flip the bottom, right? This divided by this is the same thing as this times the reciprocal of this. So we can rewrite this and say this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to negative infinity of, I'm going to write this first, minus 2 over x cubed multiplied by, if I flip this one, it's going to be x squared over x squared plus 1. Now divided by, this is going to be negative 1 over x squared. Okay, let's take care of the top first, and then we'll come take care of the bottom one. So now we have this, which will be equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Now if we clean this up, this x squared takes, care, takes out two of these. We're going to end up with um, negative 2 will be left on top. That's going to be negative 2 divided by. Now, x squared will cancel x squared here. We have just x. So x times x squared plus 1 will give us x cubed plus x. So here we have x cubed plus x. Brilliant. Divided by negative 1 over x squared. So now we do the same thing. You can flip or you just multiply the top and bottom by x squared or maybe negative x squared. So you can cancel everything out. Maybe that's what I want to do. I'm going to multiply this by because I want to get rid of this negative, negative x squared. I multiply this also by negative x squared. So like this. Okay. If we do the multiplication for both of them to get rid of this, our answer is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative x squared times this is going to be 2x squared. Brilliant. 2x squared. Okay. Over x cubed plus x. 
And what's going to be under? Well, this is going to cancel this out because the negatives will cancel out and x squared cancels x squared. So it's just one times one and that's it. There's nothing left to be simplified. And now you have a brand new problem to take the limit of. And we all know what this limit is going to go to because the best strategy when you're dealing with infinity is to divide everything you've got by the biggest exponent of x in the expression. So this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Here, you're going to divide it by x cubed. Everything is divided by x cubed, okay? Divide the top by x cubed, the bottom by x cubed. So it's going to be 2x squared divided by x cubed. You go down here, it's going to be x cubed divided by x cubed. And you go here, it's going to be plus x divided by x cubed. Guess what we've got? This is going to be the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this is going to be 2 over x. 2 over x divided by 1 divided by 1 over x squared. Nice. So tell me what happens as x gets larger and larger. This is going to go to zero because x gets very big. Whether it's negative or positive infinity, this goes to zero. So you're going to end up with zero over one plus this is going to go to zero also. So this is zero over one, which is zero. So we did all of this for nothing. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.